What's going on guys, Sleafy here and welcome back to another Albion Online video. In my previous video I showed you all the melee DPS builds the fleet uses on the roads of Avalon and today I will show you all the ranged DPS builds we have for this content. Now you might have seen some of the roads of Avalon PvP highlights I've posted on my channel and you might also have wondered what our builds look like. So in this series of three videos I will show you all the builds we use and explain everything about them. We have a total of 11 builds and among these, the four ranged builds I will cover today feature the Inferno, Permafrost, Light Crossbow and Cursed Skull. When we create a 7-man group for the Roads of Avalon, these are the builds we choose from. We did a lot of testing and trying out as a guild and found these builds make for the most optimal gameplay experience for this content. We've had enormous success with these builds in both the PvE and PvP the Roads of Avalon have to offer, and hopefully it will do the same for you. Our first ranged DPS is the Inferno, which makes for a combination of AoE and single target damage. The Inferno also provides utility to your team in two different ways. First in the form of a crowd control, which you can use to block your enemies, and secondly in the form of a buff that will increase your party's magical damage, healing cost, and also help reduce the cast time of various abilities. Your role in PvP as the Inferno is to peel for your team with your crowd control, whilst dishing out a ton of damage against anyone that tries to get close to your backline. Starting with the weapon, we are looking at the Inferno staff, which has Contagious Fire as the special ability. This is an AoE damage over time ability that will do an enormous amount of damage to all targets hit by it. In your primary, you want to take Firebolt to burst a single person down as quickly as possible. Burning Field is also a viable option if you wish to play more around AoE damage, but our preference is in getting rid of people that try to dive the backline as fast as we can, hence Firebolt. As for your secondary ability, you want to be on Wall of Flames, which makes for an insane CC that will fear anyone that gets in contact with it. And the passive you want to use on the Inferno is Aggressive Caster. The Inferno staff is very energy hungry, therefore you take the Scholar Cowl as your energy source. Aggression as the passive on this cowl for increased damage. The Royal Rope brings a very strong buff to your entire backline, which will help a lot in different areas. Once again, you want to take the Aggression Passive for increased damage. Then you have the Royal Shoes, which makes for a good mobility skill that will make you immune to everything whilst you use it. On this one, you want to take the Balanced Mind Passive. Since you have your energy source covered, you can go for extra defenses with the Mortal Cape, which is always good to have as a squishy backline player. You want to take the Pork Omelette for increased car speed and lower cooldowns on the Invernal, and of course, a resistance potions withstand the burst damage of enemy players who are bound to dive your backline. With this loadout, we use a T8 bag and the Spectral Bat. Our second range of DPS is the Permafrost. This is a crucial role you definitely want to have in every party. The Permafrost brings a ton of damage to the team, whilst also having very strong crowd control abilities and even a good amount of mobility. Your role in PvP is to look for clumps and throw everything you have in your arsenal on it. But of course, since you want to position yourself as defensively as possible for the majority of the fight, you want to dish out your damage on anything that could possibly put pressure on you. On the permafrost, you have Ice Crystal as the special ability, which makes for a very impactful stun and damage combo. On your primary, you want to take Ice Shard, which is an ability you will spam like crazy whenever playing this weapon. On your secondary, you have Frost Nova, which aside from making for mobility, also makes for a stun and damage. You can be very creative in how you go about using this ability. Then on the passive, you take Aggressive Caster for reduced cast time. This build is energy hungry like no other, therefore you want to take the Royal Cow to nullify your energy cost completely for 50% of the time you find yourself in combat. On the cow, you take the Concentration Passive for reduced cast time. Then you have the Scholar Rope, which is yet another crucial part of this build that will help you sustain your energy whilst also reducing your cast time. Once again with the Concentration Passive. 
And then you want to take the Cleric Sandals for a second blink that's also instant and adds to your mobility. And just like the other two pieces, you also take Concentration for the passive on this one. Cast Time is a really important perk on the Permafrost. Therefore you take the Morgana Cape to have one more buff that will reduce your cast time, allowing you to dish out even more damage. Pork Omelette as the food for lower cooldowns and even more cast time reduction. And you want to have resistance potions in case you need to withstand some of the damage you might eventually receive. Once again with a tier 8 bag and the Spectral Bat. Our third ranger DPS is the Light Crossbow, which can and will leave an enemy in a very weakened state, allowing your team to burst that target down real quick. With this build, you also have a lot of single target and AoE damage, and you also bring offensive and defensive utility to your team. Your role in PvP is to call out a target whose armor you're going to shred, so that you and your team can dish out as much damage as possible on the target that's been pierced, to turn the fight in your favor as quickly as possible. You also bring defensive abilities for your backline that can protect your team through shields and purges. On the light crossbow you have exploding shot as your special ability. This ability puts a sticky bomb onto your target which explodes after a few seconds making for AoE damage. You also have auto fire on your primary to do damage against a single target that will once again end up exploding and do damage on everyone else around your target. And most importantly, you have Sunder Shot on your secondary, which reduces the resistances of your target enormously, leaving them in a very weakened state. As for your passive, you want to take Well Prepared, which makes for a reset on your primary. Now the Light Crossbow is a one-handed weapon, allowing you to take an offhand with it. You want to be on the Face Breaker, which will increase a ton of your offensive, but also defensive stats. If you are confident in your abilities, you can also consider going for a Crypt Candle for even more damage. To help protect yourself and your backline, you take the Guardian Helmet on the Light Crossbow for the AoE Shield. Toughness has the passive on this one for increased defenses. To add utility to this build in the form of a Purge, whilst making for huge damage increases, you want to be on the Mage Rope. Aggression has the passive on this one for increased damage. Then once again, the Royal Shoes which just makes for a really great mobility skill. Balance Mind has the passive on these shoes. With this build you take the Martlock Cape for extra defenses to have a bigger chance of survival in case you get dived. Beast 2 as your food for increased damage and resistance potions in case the enemy decides to hard focus you. And again with a T8 bag and the Spectral Bat. Then our fourth and final range of DPS for the Roads of Avalon which is the Cursed Skull. With how the roads are designed, this build adds immense value in the form of zoning your enemies. And if they decide to not respect your zoning potential, they simply get a ton of damage for it in return. As the curse skill, your role in PvP is to apply constant pressure on your enemies with the abilities you have available to you. Whilst doing this, just like the light crossbow, you also provide various utility to your team in the form of shields and purges. The Curse Skull has the Haunting Screams ability, which has immense zoning potential and makes for a ton of damage. On your primary, you take Cursed Sickle for Dot and Constant Pressure, and the same applies to your secondary, on which you take Dark Matter. Since you don't have any energy sustained in this build, you take Energetic on your weapon to make up for that. You take the Guardian Helmet, which has an AoE shield and makes for defenses for you and your allies. Toughness as the passive on this helmet. Then the Mage Rope, which makes for utility and defense in the form of a Purge, on which you take Aggression as the passive for increased damage. And then the Cleric Sandals, which has the Blink ability that will help you reposition whenever you need to. Once again, with the Aggression passive. As for your Cape, you want to have Martlock, since this one provides the most value among all Capes for this specific build. It simply provides you extra defenses and allows you to stay in the fight for as long as possible and with that, keep the pressure going. Eel Stew as your food, which makes for both cooldown reduction and damage increase, and then the resistance potion, just like all the other range of DPS builds, for a strong defense in case you ever get in trouble. With this loadout, we once again use a tier 8 bag and the spectral bat. As I said in my previous video, do know that it will take some time and practice for you and your group to get used to these builds. So give yourself and your team that time. 
And if you want to improve, the most important thing will be recording and learning from your gameplay. Ideally, everyone in your team records their gameplay and you guys watch it together when you have the opportunity. As always, remember to have fun and I'll see you next time.